morning, church. I want to pray uh, so that I can think clearly because <clears throat> it's been an amazing week. I don't do well on little sleep. My head is throbbing right now, and I'm having a hard time focusing. So would you pray with me? <clears throat> Father, as has already been mentioned here, I just want to echo that uh, we get to celebrate a lot of things today as a church. And we'll get to continue to celebrate them in the weeks ahead. Uh, as we look to truths of what Jesus called us to as a church in practice and uh, proclamation, ask that you would uh, help each of us to hear what your Spirit would say to us. I want to pray for Evelyn and Hudson this morning as they share their testimonies before baptism. Pray that you would use the story of their journey with you to speak to people's hearts this morning. Be glorified uh, in this step that they've chosen to make. Likewise, as we celebrate communion, help us to enter in to the meaning and depth that we choose to celebrate. Jesus Christ laying down his life for us and the power of the resurrection that we might be set free from the power of sin and death. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. In a little bit, following communion, we're going to introduce four new members to the church. And in addition to communion, we're going to celebrate two people getting baptized today, unless there's some others that decide to step up, which you will always have that opportunity. <coughs> Just want to lay that out in front of you to be prepared for that. You may not have come with dry clothes, but hey, it's really wet outside anyways. So... When you go through a membership class, you get to this place where it says, uh, uh, as a church, we celebrate, we practice two ordinances, and then we just move on. I don't know if we ever stop and just pause for a moment, and what is an ordinance of the church? What does it mean? In our faith expression as part of the Christian Missionary Alliance, we observe two ordinances, baptism and communion. Uh, an ordinance in, in the church context uh, is used within the church for a, a practice that was initiated by Jesus Christ and set forth to his followers to practice in an ongoing fashion for the purpose of tangibly being reminded of Jesus' life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. It, it could be said that when we engage in ordinances like communion, which Jesus introduced to us, or baptism, it allows people to, to touch, literally, to feel the gospel. The good news that Jesus Christ offers to everyone forgiveness, freedom from sin, the hope of eternal life. Not just hearing about it, but I get to participate in it, if you will, to, to put hands to experience in the gospel. When we do this, it symbolizes our faith and obedience as the people of God. Uh, practice and observance of these ordinances are opportunities some are going to participate in some. All are going to be offered to opportunity to participate in another, but to express our faith. Communion and baptism 
visual aids, physical aids, to, ce to celebrate and illustrate some core biblical beliefs that we hold to. Primarily the truth of what Jesus Christ accomplished for you and me. Laying his life down on the cross. Power of the res resurrection, defeating hell, power over us. Taking the keys of death and hell, providing for us eternal life. Not just when I die to a life, but the power to live the life he's called us to now. A believer's baptism. We practice baptism by immersion. We put people all the way under the water if they're physically able to participate in that. Why do we do that? Well, it, it's a number of reasons, but, but it symbolizes when it takes place a spiritual rebirth that we see in the gospel. When someone goes under the water, encouraged to remember that Jesus Christ died for you laid his life down for you, went into the earth, literally. And when you come back out of the water, it's the picture of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, setting him, him free from the grave, setting you and I free from the power of death. Reminds me of Jesus' resurrection and the resurrection power that is available to you and me. Paul explains this to the believers in Colossae when he writes this. Having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead. In his letter to the Christians in Rome, Paul wrote, Don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Baptism doesn't bring about someone's salvation. It is a proclamation of a work that Jesus Christ has done in us in word, through a testimony, and then an act of obedience in front of others to give testimony. I choose to follow Christ. I have laid down my life for him, and by faith, I'm going to walk in the power of the Spirit to live out this life that he's called me to. Communion. When believers take communion, a piece of bread that we eat symbolizes the sinless body of Christ, broken, laid down for us at the crucifixion. The cup symbolizes his blood poured out again for the forgiveness of our sins. Paul, again, Apostle Paul, writing in his letter to, the first letter he wrote to the church in Corinth. For I received from the Lord... What I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in that statement of do this in remembrance of me is the ordinance of celebrating communion. The ordinance of baptism is in the Great Commission. Paul goes on in the same way, he also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I want to invite uh, those who are going to serve uh, communion to come on up. Thank you, Noah. People, thank you, thank you. And I want to ask the, uh, the elders to come on up and gather around behind this, these uh, two couples, please. <clears throat> uh, 
um, membership is not considered an ordinance. Uh, I do see it as biblical in that when people choose to uh, become a part of a body. Uh, for me, membership is a big deal. Uh, I recognize that in the church today, it's not as emphasized. But when I see people who want to say and choose to say, I want to be part of this group. I believe in what God is doing. I believe what it stands for. I want God to use me here in this place uh, to be affirmed and built up and to use your gifts and talents to bless the rest of the church. To me, it's not something that's taken lightly. And my goodness, you endured a long class. So appreciate each one of you. And as I've gotten to know, uh, each of you and spend time with each of you. Uh, you have tremendous gifts and abilities in yourselves alone. How I see God use each of you, you have more than that to give to this local body and, and outside of this local body as you already do. I'm glad that you've chosen to join with us. And with that, I want to ask you to stand. And as a uh, symbol, if you will, of uh, greeting them, I want to invite you to extend a hand of blessing toward them. And gentlemen, if you would lay hands on this group. And I'm sorry I didn't ask anyone to be prepared for this, but Joel, if you wouldn't mind asking a blessing over these two couples. You have placed Dover here long before any of us were alive. People established a vision and were captured by your spirit to, to plant this church and to create a mission to carry out your purpose in this building and with the people who attend here. We are grateful that you have placed each of us here. We are thankful for those today that are joining in the, in the commitment to membership, into the, the unity of the body, into the work of what God is doing in us and through us. So we ask you to open our eyes to their gifts, to open our eyes to how to encourage and to build up one another as you've called us to do. We pray for your spirit to dwell richly among all of us here, and we ask you to bless these couples and to allow them to grow in the ways that you've intended, to minister in the ways that you've prepared for them, and to express the gifts that you've given them in powerful ways that will transform lives here and abroad. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Ask uh, Hudson and Evelyn to come on up. Steve, would you mind bringing up one of those stools? Thank you, sir. I didn't ask who's going to go first. Sometimes it's easier and harder to go first, but I'm just going to, because you're up here first, you get to go first. Come on over here. Uh, I'm right there. And Evelyn, you can have a seat just to. All right, very good. <laughs> Appreciate that. So, um, Hudson went through a, a baptism class prior to our last baptism that we had, and then after he realized all that was entailed, he's like, I'm not quite ready to do this. Now, sometime later, had expressed to his mom and dad, before we move, I want to get baptized at Dover because this is where I grew up. So, Hudson. 
All right. And Hudson has grown up here. He was a little baby when we joined the church seven years ago. And our very first um, Sunday when we chose to go to Dover was da Darren and Kylie's baptism. And so that was last weekend, seven years ago. And then they got married. Today is their anniversary. So we're excited about that. But um, Hudson has grown up through the Sunday school. And he's going to share a little bit about how he gave his life to Jesus. So why don't you tell us who you are first? I'm Hudson Biedner, and I'm almost nine, and yeah. Okay. And can you tell us about when you accepted Jesus as your Savior? So one day I went to camp. It was called Camp Rivercrest. On the first day, they had this like slip of paper that said, Do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior? And I checked yes. Awesome. <laughs> And how has your life been different since you had that experience at camp last summer? Well, it's been different because, well, at first, I didn't really, like, pray to him a lot. And, like, after, I, we discovered Shane and Shane. And I love the song because it says, live in step with the Spirit. I think we're going to sing that song today. And yes, it talks about the fruits of the Spirit, doesn't it? And living in step with Him. And one part says, what can you do without God? I can do nothing without you, right? I can do nothing without you. Yeah, that's really special. So also, um, why do you want to be baptized today? I want to be baptized because I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. And share it with others. And share it with others. And is there anything else you want to share? Nope. Nope. No. No. <laughs> well, so, Evelyn sent me an email. And uh, been running around a lot, and we were going to a council, and... Um, uh, I know that she uh, met with her folks to talk about baptism, and um, then she sent me back her testimony and made me cry. And I said, I cannot wait to hear you publicly proclaim what God has done in your life. Okay, so my name's Evelyn Bunt. Um, I accepted Christ at a very young age. I don't really remember much about it, but I know I was eager to do it, and it felt like the right thing to do. My parents are amazing people, and throughout my childhood, they nurtured my faith and helped me understand why we believe what we believe. Through their actions and their words, they showed me what it looks like to be a faithful follower of Jesus. This church has also helped me grow through Awana, Sunday School, Youth Group, and other various activities. The summer after my sixth grade year, I struggled a lot with whether or not my faith was my own. I knew all about faith and had heard the stories about people coming to Christ, but I knew that my story wasn't like that. I knew everything in my head, but I hadn't yet transferred it to my heart, and I didn't know how to deal with that. Every summer, I would go to Rackin River Bible Camp with my cousins, and that year was no exception. As I headed off to camp, I can remember telling myself I was just going to have fun and not worry about everything I was struggling with. However, every night, the pastor, after finishing his sermon, would pray. He told us all to close our eyes and not worry about others' opinions. Of course, as a middle schooler, that was my main concern. <laughs> he would invite anyone who needed to talk with someone about accepting Christ or anything else to quietly get out of their chair and leave the room. Then their counselor would follow so they could talk about it and help them. At the beginning of the week, I knew God wanted me to go talk with my counselor, but I was too concerned about other people's opinions to listen. Every night when he started to pray, I would sit there tensely counting the seconds until he was done. I would have a full-on conversation with myself to justify why I didn't need to go, even though the Holy Spirit was telling me I needed to. On the final day, my cousins had to leave early, and if I'm honest, their opinion was the most important to me. When the pastor invited people to start that, to leave that night, I finally surrendered and left the chapel to go talk with my counselor. When we started talking, I told her about my struggles and broke down my walls. God used her to comfort me. Her words spoke to my heart, and I felt such a calm and gentle peace settle over me. I can't really explain it, but I can tell you I was given God's peace in that moment. Every time I think of it, it reminds me of how real, awesome, and loving our God is. Whenever the question of, are you there, God, pops into my head, the Holy Spirit gently reminds me of that moment, and I remember how real and present he was at that time, and how he still is. After that week, I felt the shift in my heart. I was no longer living for myself. 
I knew that everything I had heard was no longer just in my head. It was also in my heart. Since then, I've become much better at reading my Bible, not just because I know I should do it, but to gain wisdom and understanding of who God is. God has also helped me to become more aware of others and has given me a heart to help and bring joy into others' lives. Although, like everyone, I still struggle, I know that God is always there for me and will never leave me. I am so grateful for the moment when I hit rock bottom. God used that to change my life and to show me a small part of who he is and his infinite love for us. As I continue to grow in my relationship with him, I pray that he will help me to lose my wants, my ways, and myself so I can enter into his plan for me and grow to be more like him. I'm going to lead a trip for a week. I'll come home for a week, and then my entire family will join me for one week in Tulsa, um, in North Tulsa, at a kids' camp that we're going to be ministering at. So they'll all get to serve, and then Abby's going to join me for a second week um, in Tulsa, and then she's going to come home solo flying back to Minneapolis from Tulsa, and then she's going to attend church camp for a week at Big Sandy Camp, which is an alliance camp near Lake Superior. So you've gone there, yeah? So she's going to have a busy summer, um, and God's going to do a lot of really great stuff in our family for sure as we serve together. And I don't know if you remember, but when Abby was seven, she was baptized, and she stood up here on this stage and said she wanted to be a missionary, and so it's happening. So we thank you for your prayers and commissioning today. And here comes this one. <laughs> nice hair. Yeah, he's coming, I think. You change faster than him, huh? There we go. 
Is there anything you guys want to say about your time serving? Oh. It's just been uh, really fun to get to see like me grow from saying I wanted to be a missionary to now actually doing it in like a month from now or yeah. a few weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so I can't wait. I can't wait to go on many missionary trips, and I can't wait to go to uh, to Tucson. Tulsa. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right, how beautiful are the feet that bring good news? Here they come, barefoot. <laughs> All right, do you have anything to say? I don't know what was already said. I, I just shared a uh, transition where we had these. I think we're good. Okay. All right. Oh, <laughs> Steve. <Wilson. laughs> All right, well, I'll just say, express my gratitude to this enti entire church body uh, for embracing us, loving us, um, welcoming us into this family. So we will deeply miss this place and. Uh, we're excited, though, for being where our feet are. And so wherever we are, that's where we're going to try to bring light to. For, this, <clears throat> for the sake of room, <clears throat> maybe up there is good. So I want to invite the uh, elders and their wives uh, I also want to have uh, Cindy and Mary Block to come up to pray. And then anyone else wants to gather around them as well. Uh, it's been said that a mark of a great church are the people that are sent out from it. So uh, sad relationally, but exciting uh, ministry and kingdom advance-wise. And so I want to invite you to come and gather around uh, and I want to ask people to, uh, as you're praying, and um, there's school transitions and, fa and friend transitions and new homes transitions, uh, not just a, a new place of ministry transition. So I uh, just want you to know we're praying for all of you. All right. Uh, Cindy, I'm going to ask you to pray first. And... Um, Dear God, we just lift up the Bidner family to you today, and um, I particularly want to just thank you, God, for your goodness in having them be a part of our body for these past seven years. I, I praise you for the imprint they have left upon so many of us and on our church and our community. Uh, and we just, uh, we love them, God, and we want to send them into their next stage of life with your full blessings. So I pray your blessings upon them today, their entire family, as they are stepping out on faith to do your work. Uh, and we praise you for that, God. I pray for Carrie in particular as she is working with Praying Pelican Missions and uh, that she would just be your shining star there, God, uh, as she ministers to the people around her and leads the groups there. I pray for Abby as she's stepping into her missionary work, uh, as well as Hudson and Wyatt, I'm sure, too, would we'll all be helping in this, and Aaron. I pray for Aaron as he kind of holds down the fort at home when Carrie isn't there. Uh, and I just praise you that they look upon this as a calling for their, for their full family, God. And is that the way it should be? That they as a family are serving you. So I pray the power of your spirit upon them, God. We know as Alliance people that you are our savior, our sanctifier, our healer, and our coming king. And praise you for that as you sanctify this family and bring them into the work that you have them to do for you. I pray that your spirit would be upon them, that you would just pour your spirit and your power into them, that they would be doing the work, your work here on earth and bring your kingdom to many here on earth, God. So I do lift them up to you today. 
Father, I just thank you for this family as well, and I echo and I agree with all the prayers that Cindy has. And now that the, their children are going to be starting a new school, I pray for a really good transition. Lord, I pray that they would be beacon, uh, beacons of light for you wherever you place them. I pray for Christian friends, and I also pray for non-Christian friends. I pray that they would be surrounded by um, these different ones. Lord, may they uh, have a word. May they encourage. May they be the light of Christ. I know. I know that you want to use them even at their young age. And so I pray that you would anoint the kids just as much as mom and dad. And we just um, ask that you would fill them with every spiritual blessing inside. I know that scripture already has told us in Ephesians that we have that, that we have every spiritual blessing because of you. And so fill them, Lord, from the bottom of their toes to the top of their heads with um, uh, the ability to extend grace and love and the gospel because people in Minnesota need you just as much as people need you here or around the world. So, Lord Jesus, thank you for this family. Pray your anointing upon them in for the kingdom and for your furthering of your work here. In this, in this states, in the states, and then around the world. Father, we're so grateful that we are all a part of the body of Christ. And even though you take uh, and we send forth those who were our missionaries, Father, I pray that we would continue to be the body of Christ, and that they will always know that we are supporting them and that we are a part of their mission work. Lord, I ask that you would uh, help them as they uh, adjust to a new community, as they adjust to a new culture. Uh, Lord, as they adjust to the various tasks that are before them. Father, I pray again for your anointing as they go forth uh, individually in reaching their community where they will be living, but also around the world, as they take mission trips, as they uh, minister in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Father, would you fill them with your love and peace? And when the discouraging times come, would you just help them to know that you are right there with them, that you will supply for every one of their needs. Father, I pray that you would uh, give them victory in their lives from day to day. Lord, there are going to be times that are going to be tough, that are, that are difficult, that are uh, almost in, uh, unmanageable in our own strength. But you are their strength. You are their power. You are the, their victory. And so we pray that they may lean hard on the power of Jesus Christ. We thank you for your resurrection. We thank you for your victory. And we ask, oh God, that you would uh, give them great joy as they serve you. Father, thank you for this opportunity of sending them forth. In your name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Somebody say something about ice cream. Today at Windmill Park, we'd love for all of you to join us for some ice cream. Um, anytime between, um, I know it was printed at 2 o'clock, but yeah, 3 to 5 would be great. Um, and if you need uh, to be a part, or if you would like to be a part of our prayer newsletter, um, I have some cards with that information and our new address too. So please ask. Windmill Park, the park. Cream at the park. You're dismissed. Give somebody a hug? No. Give three people a hug before you go. God bless. Thank you, Tim. Good God.